How much do you know about Wolverine? Here are five insane things about Wolverine you may not have known about, and we can almost guarantee that at least one of these things will take you by surprise. He was almost the Badger. Yep, that's right, Wolverine was nearly a Badger. As vicious as the creature in the above photo looks, I'm pretty sure a guy called Badger would be hard to take seriously. The name Wolverine even sounds scary, so it's hard to think that Logan almost wasn't one. Writer Lynn Wein was asked to create a Canadian character to bolster the dwindling market in that area of the continent and decided to choose an animal that called the Frozen North home. He narrowed it down to Badger or Wolverine. Lucky for everyone, he went with Wolverine. Wolverine's claws originally weren't part of his body. When Lynn Wein first conceived Wolverine way back in 1974, he had some wildly different thoughts as to the character's backgrounds and skills. For one thing, Wein didn't originally make Wolverine's claws part of his body. Instead, they were part of his costume and were attached at his wrist instead of through his knuckles. Wolverine's first appearances, Wolverine's claws remained affixed to his wrist and were popped out at all times. It took two years for Chris Claremont to reveal that Wolverine's claws were actually part of his body. Despite the evolution of Wolverine's claws, Wayne always intended Wolverine's claws were always retractable, as Wayne didn't see how a superhero with giant knives attached to his hands could complete simple tasks like opening a door or tying his shoes. Wolverine Can't Stay Drunk We've seen Wolverine consume copious amounts of alcohol in the comics, right? The man drinks, either to remember certain events or to forget them altogether. He's a troubled character, and as such, he has his vices. But did you know that alcohol does very little to Wolverine's body? In fact, even the buzz he gets lasts for a ridiculously short amount of time. Because of his rapid healing factors, the alcohol he consumes doesn't affect his liver. There's practically no harm done, and for better or worse, Logan can't even stay drunk long enough to make the alcohol worthwhile. Whatever buzz he gets is quickly snapped back into focus by his body's healing mechanism. Any slight alteration to his blood is quickly flushed out and set back straight. Wolverine's looks were inspired by Clint Eastwood. In the early 1980s, Chris Claremont and Frank Miller collaborated on Wolverine's first ever miniseries, which came to define the character in multiple ways. Not only did that series introduce Eastern elements to Wolverine's background and personality, famously turning him into a ronin, a masterless samurai, Miller also subtly changed Wolverine's appearance to resemble Clint Eastwood, the actor behind hits like the Dirty Harry movies and The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. Miller wanted Wolverine to exude Eastwood's quiet macho toughness and confident swagger and morphed Wolverine's traditionally short and stocky frame into a slightly more sleek look. Sure, Wolverine was still short, but he carried himself like a man who knew he could kill you in the drop of a hat. The redesign stuck and Wolverine skyrocketed to unheard of levels of popularity because of the subtle change. Many years later, James Marigold claimed his movie The Wolverine was inspired in part by the Clint Eastwood movie The Outlaw Josie Wells. Hugh Jackman wasn't Wolverine's first choice Australian actor Hugh Jackman is synonymous with Wolverine, having played the character since the 2000 X-Men movie. However, Jackman wasn't 20th Century Fox's first choice to play Wolverine. Instead, Fox wanted Russell Crowe, the star of Gladiator, to play Wolverine instead. Crowe turned down the part and suggested Jackman, a close friend and countryman, for the part instead. Jackman also credits Crowe for getting him the lead in Australia, as Crowe turned down that part too, so maybe Jackman should just hire Crowe as his new agent. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.